Crowley. I'm here at Teachers College, Columbia University in New York City, where I'm a professor of practice in the program of speech language pathology. These are cleft palate video modules that I've created with my co-authors, Dr. Miriam Bigori and Ms. Chelsea Summer. We're now at module 3.4, where we look at how to eliminate glottal stops, a very common compensatory error in cleft palate speech. Now we are going to discuss strategies for eliminating glottal stops. Often speech therapists who do not know about cleft palate speech hear a glottal stop is an omission of a sound. But rather, this sound is produced at the vocal cords, like uh-oh. One of the things that we do after the cleft palate surgery is to make the child understand that he or she is making the sound come out from the throat and you want the sound to come through the mouth. For example, I'm saying fafa in our Kikuyu language, they say ah ah. So we try to let him understand that the sound is not supposed to be from the throat, supposed to come all this way up to the mouth and to say fafa. Glottal stops are typically used to substitute high pressure sounds, such as pa, ba, ta, da, ka, ga, and sometimes fricatives like s and affricates like ch. And glottal stops occur at the level of the larynx in the vocal folds. Uh oh. A glottal stop is a compensatory production produced in the glottis or vocal folds. Glottal stops give children the feel of a high-pressure air explosion when they are unable to create this high-pressure sound due to the opening of the cleft. Instead, they produce this sound in the glottis. These compensatory airs often continue after surgical intervention. So a glottal stop is a voice consonant. Production is in the larynx and is generally a substitution for stop sounds such as pataka, badaga. But this may also be a substitution for any other high-pressure consonant. A glottal stop can also be co-produced with any other high-pressure consonant. So it looks like it's the correct placement. However, the production is at the glottis. So they're making a glottal stop while having correct placement. So it might look like, for puppy, it might look like me. Uh, 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 so here we will see an example of a child in Ghana using glottal stops. Huh? Reading? Mm. Um, reading. 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 Here is an example of a 21-year-old from China who recently received his secondary surgery. He uses glottal stops as a compensatory air. However, now he is working on eliminating these compensatory glottal stops. It's a little difficult. Yeah, it's a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the D. Yeah. Yeah, but you're doing it. No, because you know why you can't do it. Is it because maybe it's a glottal stop? You're pointing here. Does that sound like it, 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 like that? Is that what you mean? Is yeah. that why it's difficult? Yeah. yeah. So maybe we should do the d, right? Or the n d. That's a way to open this up. So co-articulation or co-production. A child produces the compensatory air or the glottal stop at the same time as having good placement. So for example, for the word puppy, if you only use glottal stops, it would sound like uh-e. However, with co-production, the child puts the lips together for the correct placement and still continues to make the glottal stop, as in uh-e. Princess Pickles is my dog. And Princess Pickles is my dog. Now we are going to talk about strategies to eliminate glottal stops. First, we will begin with discrimination, and this is the most important step to target before moving on in the treatment hierarchy. The reason that this step of discrimination is so important is because if the child is unable to discriminate between the correct sound and the compensatory incorrect production, then it may be difficult for that child to produce the sound because they need to understand the correct placement of articulation. Here are some examples of different types of discrimination. Auditory discrimination, as in did I hear puppy or uh-ee? 
Here's an example of a clown illustration which we like to use and we can have the child point to whether it was a throat sound for uh or a mouth sound as in puppy. Again, we can use visual discrimination. So show me where that sound was made. Was it made in the mouth or in the throat? In this video, we will see one of our family friends, Maya, using the clown to practice discrimination of the correct production versus the compensatory production. I'm gonna say a word, and I want you to listen to that p sound. And I want you to tell me if it's a mouth sound like p, a nose sound like f, or a throat <laughs> sound like uh. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna make the sound, listen, uh e. Show me on the clown where I made that sound. Ah, uh, e. That's right, on the throat. Yeah. Mm hmm good. Now try this one. Fuffy. Fuffy. No. No, try again. Listen, think about, let me just show you. Fuffy. <laughs> Did you hear that coming through the nose? Mm -hmm. Fuffy, yeah. So that's a nose no. sound. Good, good. Now listen again. Fuffy, fuffy. What is that, Maya? Mm. Nose sound, nose. right? You can hear the air coming through the nose, the sound coming through the nose. Ready? Mm-hmm. Uh e. Throat. That's right there. Uh e. You can even feel it. Uh e. Yeah. Uh e. Can you feel it? So what we're trying to do is get that sound, the pus sound, through the mouth. So listen again. Puppy, puppy, where's that sound coming from? Mouth. The mouth, excellent, good. So for younger children, we like to use the clown image for discrimination. However, for older clients, you can use the view of the profile, and you can say, was that produced in the throat or the mouth? Or you can get a picture of any individual and ask, was that in the mouth or in the throat, and have the client or child point. So another way to assess discrimination for glottal stops is tactile cues. So feeling the correct production versus the incorrect or compensatory production. So I want you to try this with me. I want you to say and put your hand on your voice box. Let me know if you feel anything. Now I want you to say Did you feel that? That was the glottal stop. So that's how you can tell if the sound was made incorrectly in the throat or correctly in the mouth. I just want you to feel it. T -t 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 -t. Now you do it. Again, here are our clown images. So a throat sound versus a mouth sound. Here's another profile view, which you could use with an older um, client who understands this anatomy and you can point to the yellow thing which is your glottis where the glottal stop is being produced or you can point to the mouth where the teeth are and say is that a mouth sound or a throat sound. You can also use a mirror to show placement of the articulators. This is important especially when eliminating glottal stops. The child must learn the correct placement of the articulators needed to make the target sound. Show them that the lips for bilabials are together so Mm, pa, pa. Show them that the lips are apart for the alveolars. Mm, t, and d. Show them that the tongue is up and back for mm, k, g, and teach them to smile for the s sound. In this video, we will see a little girl who we worked with in Ghana, and we are working on the placement of her articulators for the bilabial sounds. Have a look. That's it. Do it again. Another strategy to use when eliminating glottal stops is using the before the target sound. And we want to produce the without any voice. So for example, when producing the p sound, we can say p, 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 and make sure not to stop between the and the p. Make it continuous. So, p, 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 
Ka, ha, ka, ha, ta, ha, ta, ha, ta, ha, ta. Use the ha before a high pressure target to avoid glottal stops, as in and I encourage you to do this with me. And for So here are videos of our clients using the before stop sounds to eliminate their glottal stops. Good. Good. Good job. Caution clinicians, when using the h to elicit the target sound, do not separate the h from the target sound. The sound should be elicited in one continuous motion. Do not exaggerate production of the high pressure sound as even gentle production will be challenging for the child. So for example, do not say because it's very difficult for the child to produce that high pressure oral sound. Be gentle, say Caution clinicians, when eliminating glottal stops, do not plug the nose. The child will continue making the glottal stops even if the nose is plugged. So for example, if we take the word cookie, with glottal stops, it'll sound like uh ee. So let's see if anything changes. Uh ee, uh ee, no change. So there was no change because that sound was being produced at the level of the glottis. So do not plug the nose when eliminating glottal stops. We are now going to look at different ways to eliminate glottal stops. When teaching that airflow should be through the mouth, we really have to show that the air is coming out of the mouth because glottal stops are being produced at the level of the glottis, so no air is coming out of the mouth. If you make a glottal stop with me, you will see that no air comes out of the mouth. Uh, 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 uh. However, in high pressure sounds such as we feel a lot of air coming out of the mouth, and this is what we want to teach the child or the patient. So have the patient attempt the target sound while placing a tissue in front of their mouth to show oral airflow. Here is an example. <laughs> you can also use a small sheet of paper or a cotton ball on your hand to demonstrate airflow with the oral sound. You can also use your finger to flick a tissue as a visual cue for your child or client. Make sure to always pair this activity with the target sound. These are not blowing exercises. We also like to use nasals made in the same place as the high pressure sound. So to elicit the p and b, we use the m mm sound with the lips together. And to elicit the t and d sound, we can use n t n d because those are made in the same place. And for the k and g, we can use n k n g. Make sure to always pair this activity with the target sound. We use these strategies because it takes focus off of the glottal region and focuses the articulators in the correct place, such as n p. We're focusing on having the lips together as opposed to a hard glottal attack down here. Caution clinicians, these are not oral motor exercises as every activity is paired with the target sound. Rather, these activities demonstrate that there is airflow out of the mouth for all the oral sounds. Be sure that the child is not just blowing the paper or the ball. The child must be producing the sounds during all of these activities. With glottal stops, teach the voiceless before the voiced cognate. For example, we would want to teach the t before teaching the d. This helps because for the voiceless sound, as in t, 
the glottis is open, so this will prevent a glottal stop. However, for the D sound, the glottis closes for the vowel. D, D. Use nasals produced in the same location. Use the M sound to help with production of the P and B because M is made in the same place as P and B. Now I want you to do this. So you think M and then you turn it into a P like M, P. Ma. Very good. Try it again. M, P. There you go. How about M, Ba, Ba, Ba. Ma, Ba, Ba. There you go. Use the N sound to help with production of the T and D sound because the N is made in the same place as T and D. Let's try. Good work. Good. Alright, five more. One more time. I really want you to focus on the air coming out of your mouth. So, da. Close. That was good. That's it. Good work. Good work. Use mm to help with production for k and ga because mm is made in the same place as k and ga. Wink. Wink. You say wink. Wink. You know birds, what do they have? They have wing. Wings. Not wing. Wings. 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 Very good. Can you say wings three times now? Wings. 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 Wing. Good job. I like where your tongue is. Right there. Sink. 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 It is very important that the parent is involved in therapy as well as carryover strategies at home. We want you to practice three times a day for at least 100 times each. We have seen much success when parents are involved in therapy and practice at home. This comes to the end of Module 3.4 on how to address glottal stops with children with repaired cleft palates. If you want more information or to get to all of the modules, please go to leadersproject.org.